For most of the morning, you're left all alone in Loki's room, which is fine by you. Your cramps are pretty strong, you feel bloated and miserable, and you really just want to sleep. Sleep in chocolate. Hot chocolate. God, this planet makes you crave hot chocolate. It's starting to become a real problem. He isn't coming back. It would really be best for you to just accept that and try to get on with your day, but you can't. It would really help if he didn't act so sweet sometimes. That's what's got you really messed up. If he was just terrible across the board, then you could at the very least hate him and be glad that he's staying away from you. But the fact that he spent half the night rubbing your stomach kind of makes that impossible. You wonder if he just didn't sleep at all, or if he just has some sort of internal alarm clock that helps him sneak away in the morning before you wake up, sparing him any awkwardness. They both seem equally likely, considering that it's Loki. Job stops by for a moment or two to escort you to the bathroom and leave some food for you, but she's off again almost immediately, and she seems pretty preoccupied. You wonder if maybe tensions are running high in the royal family now that the former future king of Jotunheim is back in the capital. When the door scrapes and slides open, you sit up in bed, expecting, hoping, that Loki has decided to come check on you and maybe even snuggle up for a bit. But it isn't Loki. It's Bylister. He saunters into the room, the door sliding closed behind him, and your pulse pounds. How did he get in? Does Loki know? At first, he simply looks at you, his head cocked slightly, expressionless. So, Inunga lives. You nod, petrified. There were rumors to the contrary. Some confusion creeps into Bylister's eyes, and you realize that he's probably smelling you too. Great. No wonder giant women hide out when they're dealing with their periods, you think. You're starting to think that sounds like a pretty fantastic approach. Bylister comes and sits at the foot of the bed. Your heart is in your throat. What the hell is he doing? Loki is going to lose his freaking mind. And why is he here? Are you dying? I am sure it would make Lady Skadi happy, if that is the case. What? No. No, sire. You quickly reply. He frowns. Then what? I am not explaining the intricacies of the human reproductive cycle to another frost giant. You think, pulling your blanket up to your chin. It's just a human thing. It happens every month, sire. Ah, another mortal weakness, I suppose. Yeah, sounds about right. You don't know if you're supposed to say anything, or just stare back at him as he studies you, wishing he would just go away and leave you alone. Of course, if you were a little more sure of what was going on in his head, you might have the nerve to ask him how things are going on in the throne room. He probably knows better than anyone how Loki and Helblindy are getting along. It would be a shame if you were to die. I doubt Jotunheim will see another mortal for many years. And I've only just begun to study you. He finally says. He crosses his legs, resting his chin in his hand. Of course, if my esteemed brother is to be believed, we will soon be able to traverse the Nine Realms freely again. What do you think of that? It... it depends, sire. What does it depend on, mortal? If you're planning to go to war, I guess. Hmm. I should like it, I think, if Midgard fell under the rule of Jotunheim. You should hope for this as well. If you were kept there, you would be much better suited for the elements, wouldn't you? What to say to that? I want to go home. But not if it means my whole planet is going to be enslaved. You wonder what he's thinking. Whatever it is, it isn't showing on his face. You are not as servile as Loki Lauterson would have us believe. There are still thoughts of rebellion in you, of escape, 
Isn't that so? I did not realize that mortals were so tenacious. You open your mouth to respond, then close it again, unable to think of a safe response. Of course I want to rebel. Of course I want to go home. Who wouldn't? I know that the king was with you last night, but I also know that he has largely set you aside. I suppose it is to ease Scotty's mind. If he does not want you, then I would be happy to accept the burden of your care. He stands and moves to the door, and you just sit there, completely dumbfounded. You may tell him that I said so. He says, and then he's gone. Crap. What the hell just happened? You think sinking back down into your nest of blankets. Loki's eyes are practically glowing when he storms into his bedroom a few hours later, the door slamming open and making you jump. Bylister was in my chambers, wasn't he? He snaps, stalking over to you. Well, yeah, you answer, too irritated to be as intimidated as you probably ought to be. It's kind of your job to keep everyone out of here, isn't it? What exactly was I supposed to do? He takes a deep breath, likely about to launch into some sort of tirade. And then his eyes narrow. Why does my bed smell of my brother, mortal? Because he sat on the foot of the bed. Loki's got a look in his eye that isn't entirely sane at the moment, and you aren't sure what to make of it. Um, hello? Everyone here is a giant, remember? Remember how you said I'm basically supposed to just smile and nod? And did you smile for Bylister? He leans over you, and you feel a surge of a jealous temper flash through you. No more than you smile for Scotty, you hypocrite. Loki bares his teeth. Careful. Oh, and by the way, he says he doesn't mind taking care of me if you're done with me now. Did he? His hand is on your neck. There's no pressure, just a light sort of caress, his thumb stroking the hollow of your throat. The sudden shift in his expression leaves you reeling. I'll have to make it clear that I am not done with you then, won't I? He's kissing you before you have the chance to offer your opinion on the subject, crowding onto the bed and bracing himself over you. You should probably be pissed, but the jealous, increasingly unnerving side of you is gloating instead. <laughs> Take that, you big idiot. Can't stay away, can you? Because, somehow, you know that he can't. And you don't want him to, either. Twining your arms around his neck, you pull him closer, your discomfort momentarily forgotten. You bite his lip, and he makes a frustrated little groan, whispering something you don't understand. What was that? You're going to be the death of me. You aren't entirely sure if he's answering your question or just making an observation, but it only makes you want to be closer to him, and you kiss his chin, running your fingers through his hair. He lets you pull him down so that his mouth is on your neck, and you feel like you're catching on fire when his tongue slides against your skin. Loki, please. You aren't even sure what you're asking for, but you just assume that he'll understand. And maybe he does, because he tears himself away from you immediately, breathing heavily. Loki sits back on his heels, wide-eyed, and you push yourself up, already missing his weight. Loki? I think that should suffice. He says, his hands curling into fists as they rest on his thighs as if he wants to grab hold of something, but doesn't think that he should. You are mine, and all of Jotunheim knows it. If my brother, if anyone, tries to interfere, there will be consequences. What? Including your eventual wives? Loki glares at you, and you realize that that look is still there. Anyone. What do you regret? You ask, suddenly desperate to know. What? 
You said that you didn't want to have more regrets last time. What do you regret? Cozying up with a human? His jaw clenches, and you wonder why that would make him angry. No. Then what? I regret that I've given you a reason to think that you care for me. I regret that I have allowed you to develop these feelings. Then send me back to Earth! Send me back to Earth because I can't keep doing this and not feel something, and neither can you! No. A strangled cry of outrage escapes you, and you heave a pillow at his head, but, of course, he easily avoids it. Why not?! Because I want you here, you stupid creature! Oh, you don't know what you want! But you better figure it out fast, buddy, because this whole hot and cold act is getting really old! I beg your pardon. You heard me. Apparently, I'm a pretty hot commodity anyway. Jesus! Even freaking Bilister is more consistent than you are! Suddenly, on the verge of tears, you curl back up on your side, dragging the blanket up to your chin. I don't even feel good. Just leave me alone. Doing your very best to ignore his presence, you squeeze your eyes closed, that always lingering sense of despair closing back in. You're going to absolutely lose it. How long can you be reasonably expected to deal with this? You feel him move away, and you're caught somewhere between relief and disappointment. But then he sits by your side, his hand on your hip. I want you. I do. But do you really want to be irrevocably bonded to me in a world where you're nothing more than a pet? Because that is what is happening, mortal. You could feel it, can't you? I feel you, and we have yet to even... Loki cuts himself off, frustrated, and you open your eyes and peer up at him. Is that why I'm so angry? I have no idea. It seems to be an insidious sort of influence. It's becoming increasingly difficult to tell when my own temper ends and yours begins. God. That sucks. If we resist temptation, it will fade. I'm sure of it. I refuse to believe that such things are capable of dictating my fate. Got any proof that it will? Loki doesn't reply. I'm... I'm okay with it. You tell him, resting your hand on his. Is the bond the reason his skin always seems to feel warmer now too? I know this whole place is messed up and I hate that, but it isn't like you're forcing me to be your sex slave or something. Your cheeks are heating from the awkwardness of it all, but you force yourself to push through. I genuinely like you. Sometimes. Isn't that what matters? <sighs> you shouldn't. That's what I keep trying to tell you. But you're not willing to send me back? Loki looks away, and you see the muscles in his jaw tense. He looks back down at you. No. You trail your fingertips along the back of his hand watching as his eyes flutter closed. But this isn't working. So what are you going to do, Loki? There's a stirring of affection in your chest, and of dread, and you don't know who it belongs to anymore. Maybe it doesn't even matter. I don't know. I don't know. Loki ends up spending the next few hours curled up around you, his hand warm on your stomach. Neither of you say a word. What can you really say? You can't ask him to give up his throne and run away to Earth with you. He's basically public enemy number one. You can't ask him to risk losing everything by starting some sort of cultural upheaval because you don't think you can bear to hear him refuse. It's better, you decide to just enjoy this moment of peacefulness for as long as you can. You can't bring yourself to regret biting him, 
even if the mark and the bond are terrifying and inexplicable. You're glad for it. He's yours. But does he like it? You wonder, suddenly suspicious. Is he the reason I feel so... possessive? Or is it the other way around? Maybe that doesn't matter either. I have to go. I did not plan to linger for this long. He says eventually, his lips against your hair. <laughs> I'm that irresistible, huh? Loki concedes, pressing his nose against the back of your neck. <laughs> yes. Yes, I suppose you are. He doesn't make any grand confession of love, and he doesn't actually kiss you again, but you're pretty sure that you've struck some sort of fatal blow to Loki's icy composure, because as the week passes, he becomes increasingly attentive. You aren't sure if it helps or hurts to come to the realization that he's trying to be gentlemanly, in his own convoluted sort of way. It's nice to know that he has some qualms when it comes to taking advantage of your position as his pet, but it also makes him seem even more appealing somehow. That's what makes it so frustrating. At night, he crawls into bed beside you, and in the morning, he tucks you in as he slips away. You don't know if he realizes that you wake up every time he leaves, but you do. It's becoming harder and harder to imagine sleeping alone in your bed back home. The twins visit, though they don't stay for long. They'll come to escort you to the bathroom or to bring you more clothes or food, but even then, you can tell that their thoughts are elsewhere. How are things going out there? You ask Greep one afternoon, nearly a week after you've returned to the palace. Loki hasn't been super forthcoming about how the courts reacted to him being confirmed as king, but you don't know if it's because he's trying not to worry you, or if he just doesn't feel like talking about it. Well enough. The king has been consulting with his court, preparing for the reconstruction of Utgard. He's rebuilding the city? That is what he claims he will do. Group frowns, seemingly lost in thought. He claims that he can return the casket of ancient winters to Jotunheim. If he does, Utgard will be restored to its former glory. And you don't think that he can? It was taken by the Asgardians long ago. I cannot imagine how he intends to recapture it. He does not have enough support to launch a war against Odin. What about things with the princes? They are... tense. Prince Helblindi does not venture often into the throne room unless the Queen Mother demands it. He is angry that the Norns have denied him a throne, and likely angry that his mother and brother did not stop it as well. You should be careful of him, Anunga. Seems like solid advice. Do you think the king is ever going to let me out of here? You ask, only half-joking. You're starting to wonder if Loki's solution to his problems is just to lock you away in a little private sanctuary, accessible only when and if he's in the mood for you. I believe so. It is my understanding that you are here because of your condition, in fact. You would be subject to quite a bit of attention if you were in the throne room. The king already very nearly came to blows with Prince Bylister over his curiosity. What? Grape's voice drops. Perhaps I am not supposed to tell you, but Gialp was with the king in the archives when he summoned Prince Bylister to him, and she said that he threatened to turn him into a serpent if he ever entered his chambers again uninvited. But... The prince knows better than to argue. It was undoubtedly foolish for him to enter the king's chambers and to threaten the king's property. Still, I would agree that Loki Lofison has made the right choice in keeping you away from the others for a time. Things are very delicate. Well, my condition is nearly over for now. You tell her, 
still vaguely amused by the fact that they still don't seem entirely convinced that you don't have some sort of terrible wasting disease. So, do you think he'll let me out of here soon? I know it's scary out there, but I'm going a little crazy in here. Perhaps. Hey, Greep. Is it... with the bite mark stuff? Is it normal to... well, to feel things? Like, feelings that aren't necessarily yours? Her eyes dart immediately to your neck. And you say that the king has not marked you? You rest your hand on your golden collar, suddenly self-conscious. No, of course not. What are these feelings? Your embarrassment grows. Maybe you shouldn't have said anything. Well, when he's angry, I'm angry. When he's jealous, I'm jealous. Or maybe it's the other way around. I can't tell. I didn't even realize it was happening. This is most odd in Unga. I will admit, bonds such as these are rarely discussed in my clan. They are merely a practicality. You understand? It is known that you will find a connection with your spouse to better meet their needs. A satisfactory marriage increases the prospect of prosperity in children. But as for the details, these are the sorts of things that are discussed during the coming-of-age ceremony, which I've yet to have. Great. Well, is there, like, a book or something? Even if there is, I doubt that it would be applicable to your situation, mortal. Perhaps you should ask the king if he can remedy this with his magic? Yeah, maybe I will. When Loki comes back to his bedroom that night, you're wide awake and waiting for him. He looks startled to find you awake. Is it really that late? You push yourself up on your elbows, flooded with relief to be with him again. Hey. Are you feeling better? He strips off the leather vest that he's taken to wearing, and you watch in fascination as his skin shifts. He's so... He says your name, and you realize that you just kind of zoned out. Awkward. Huh? Yeah. Yeah, I'm feeling better. I'm glad to hear it. It's kind of nice to see that Loki is capable of being awkward, too. There's conflict in his eyes, though. And as he hovers just inside the doorway, you realize that he must have been using the fact that you were feeling crappy to excuse coming back to sleep with you every night. And now that he can't tell himself that, it's a necessity. I'm really cold, so... You should probably hurry up and get in bed before I freeze. Is that so? Mm-hmm. He's wavering. You're sure of it. And so you hold out your arms. Come on, your majesty. Even kings need sleep, you know. Loki sighs, but he climbs into the bed beside you anyway. Oh, you are a terrible pet. Far too bossy for my taste. Why could the Norns not send me an obedient woman, at the very least? I hope you realize that you aren't very convincing. I was. You've clearly ruined me. He pets your hair for a minute, and then he seems to realize that you weren't just kidding about being cold, because you feel his magic melt into your skin, warm and soothing. We will be going on another journey. I think that you will like it. He suddenly says, resuming his petting. Really? Your stomach knots in anxiety, but Loki, oddly enough, seems pretty calm, and that's somewhat soothing. Where are we going? To Asgard. The realm eternal. The Allfather's vault contains something that now belongs to me.